Welcome to Big Blend Radio's Soul Diving Sunday Show, featuring transformational life coach Shelly Wizen and your hosts, Lisa and Nancy. Welcome, everybody. Today's show is all about how to transform challenges into joy. That sounds crazy, but it's true. It can be done. We're going to talk about how to bridge the personal and the professional, those lives. Um, And you know what? We like to blend everything here. So we always think personal and professional go hand in hand in happiness. And of course, we've got Shelly Wizen here. And uh, Shelly, you've got a special guest with us that you're you're working with Susan Rosenthal. So welcome back first. Shelly, how are you? I'm good, honey. Thank you. How are you? Doing good, doing good. How are you doing, Susan? Welcome. I'm doing fabulous. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for letting me join. Oh, this is going to be great. So you both, between each other, what you're doing working with your clients, you do that where you look at the personal and the professional side, right? And and I believe the word brilliance comes to mind of of what you're doing, about Mm -hmm. living a life of brilliance. Mm, Yeah, yeah. That was... um... Uh, our last masterclass that we did was called Revive, Reclaim, Reignite, Rediscover Your Own Brilliance. And that's basically what we help people do is to go inside and help them rediscover that yummy, delicious brilliance that they have inside and how to Mm. bring it out and how to face challenges and do all of those wonderful things. Yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. So getting everyone together. So it's really for uh, those of us who may be in that little middle age zone going, now what? Do I buy a Porsche? Yeah, right. (laughs) Or Ferrari? (laughs) Does that make me feel better? Or is it going beyond the Porsche and Ferrari? Sometimes it's the Porsche and Ferrari is exactly what is needed. What do you think, Susan? Well, sometimes that can be like a quick fix and make you feel really good for a period of time. But then you come back to, well, what next? Yeah. So we we work with people on all levels, but a lot of the people we work with want to go deeper so that they can find that joy inside themselves, no matter mm. what is going on in the world, whether it's it's peaceful or chaotic at the time. Mm-hmm. Well, I think also um, a lot of us are having different careers, you know, throughout our lives. And, and it's like, you know, in people even retiring. I don't know people that are just retiring and going, that's it. I, you know, I'm going to just sit and watch tv or travel full you know just there's travel sure but what is is it being fulfilling that you're doing something with it you know what i mean i know a lot of people write or do something like that or a blog but um just retiring without having that sense of purpose i think is can be empty yeah we don't want to be empty we don't want to be empty we want to know all yeah, I think the whole concept of retirement has totally changed. I don't know hardly anybody who is sort of retired in the way that our parents did, and they just stop mm-hmm. doing things and just maybe focus on hobbies. Everyone I know wants to keep learning and growing and and staying relevant. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's for themselves or for other other people, but they they want purpose. They want to get up mm-hmm. with some excitement every morning. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something about, you know, that personal and professional life, you know, being one life. And uh, then, of course, you're going to overcome challenges. This is the thing, transformation of challenge um, into joy, which is really a good thing. And um, we've got a great article. Everyone, as always, uh, the article is linked in the show notes. You can also find it on blendradioandtv.com with Shelley's uh, other articles. And type in Shelly Wizen or just go to ShellyWizen.com to all the links are in the show notes. So we're going to talk about five main points. And the first one, Shelly, you said is to embrace challenges as opportunities. So even when we were talking about retirement, sometimes we're going to think retirement's going to suck. So this is this is something where we can look at opportunity, right? Right, right. So just be we're always going to have challenges. There's no question about that. Sure. We're going to have challenges because guess what? We don't know everything. Ha! Huh, what a novel, what a novel idea. We don't know Man. everything. There are going to be things that come up in our life that challenge us. And just like what Susan and I were talking about this uh, before we got on the call, that struggle and challenges are part of growing. They're all just part of it. A butterfly, if it didn't struggle to get out of its cocoon, could not push the fluid through its body and into the wing so it could fly. 
Mm. It's the struggle that helps the butterfly fly. And so, yeah. or, or like Susan mentioned, um, a, a diamond, a diamond doesn't, a diamond is created from under pressure. And so sometimes we need a little pressure in order for us to grow. So what? Yeah. That's my, my answer is so what? Well, because it makes you think, you know, a challenge makes you think and it makes you kind of get on with it and get to the point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know? And it gives you clarity. I think it helps bring clarity. I mean, mm. Susan and I have, are just going through that ourselves. I mean, we're, mm. we're going through, well, what is it? How do we do it? How do we get through these challenges that we are facing even? Mm. And um, and we, we find that when we hold the space for each other to have whatever it is that we have and to let that be okay. And if something comes up that's uncomfortable to say it, not to hold mm. it in, to say it. And, and we are becoming the, the model of even not becoming, that's what we do. We, because we need to experience things we're going to be imparting onto our clients. Otherwise, how can we teach somebody something we are not even, we haven't even gone through or don't right. know very well. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Up. Well, isn't it also something like it's something as basic as you don't have your challenge in the kitchen. I'm going to go into cooking. So, okay. you know, and I know we all know Shelly loves to cook and has her book on, you know, uh, on cooking and recipes for life. So let's just look at that. You go in the kitchen and you realize you do not have the right pan to make this breakfast dish, right? So here's a breakfast dish I saw the other day. They made a quiche inside a bundt cake pan. Mm. And oh. I thought, Good. Well, this is kind of cool with tater tots squished in there and hash browns. Oh, I'm just saying God. it's one of those that are may not be good for you. So it may be a challenge, but it but it you don't have the right pan. So it makes you turn to something else. And sometimes those opportunities like making that recipe will turn around. And now you've got something super cool that you didn't have before. So I like that idea of the, you know, challenges being an opportunity, you yeah. know, yeah, not just growth in and learning. So. Um, that that's, and I know that uh, Susan, on your side, you do a lot on the professional side, right? So wouldn't you say that's important for folks in their business arena and career to yeah. realize that? Yes. Challenges. Um, I think it's the way that we frame them because challenges can inspire people to get creative. So it can be like the beginning of a new opportunity. And, um, if we have the mindset of like, oh, this is a challenge, this is a problem, and, and go into some kind of negativity over it, then we'll go down that path. But you can also look at it and say, you know, it's, this is business. You know, there's no tragedy here. There's, there's nothing really wrong. It's just an opportunity to think differently. How can I shift, shift my perspective and make this into something really wonderful? And that's something that Shelly and I both do when we work with clients is that we help people reframe it. You know, instead of thinking of it as a problem that's happening to us, it could be a situation that's happening for us mm -hmm. to grow and try something different. Ah, I like this. Yeah, we've had, you know, our magazine had, used to be print. And here comes the Internet. And even the way marketing has changed and things changed our world, you know, and we're like, oh, we were Southwestern at one point, just covering the Southwest of USA. Mm -hmm as a print magazine. And then all of a sudden it was like, here comes the internet. And of course we jumped into the internet bandwagon and the, the website was, you know, kicking butt. And yet at the same time here, we were printing so many copies, 170,000 copies versus wow. getting a million visitors on our website. And we're like, okay, change. And then being completely online, having, you know, been raised, I mean, in the world of magazine publishing and suddenly going, well, this sucks. <laughs> we can't, yeah. It's not the same. And then the podcasting came and all of a sudden our whole horizon changed from being Southwestern to being national and international because we could interview anybody from around the world and everything changed. So that was like, you know, I really didn't want to give up the print magazine and Nancy kept going, girl, we got to go. We got, it's time. It's time to, you know, give, get over this thing and we're moving here. And it was the best thing we ever did. And now we have digital magazines again. So it's like right. these cycles also come back around. So it's mm -hmm. the other thing, a challenge. Our industry is always changing. Like every, I mean, this is why they invented wine. 
I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you pull that cork, you go pop. Yeah. Ooh, a new opportunity is coming. So <laughs> look how much paper you're saving. I, okay, I, you're saving. That that Why actually did printing? come part. That did come into a big thing yeah. of you know. Yeah. And then social media changes things. So totally. There's there's so, you know, th and that's how we met you, Shelly. Was on I, a podcast. I know. See? See, that's awesome. Yeah. So that's from Linda Jason. God bless her. Yep. Introduced mm -hmm. the diva. We yeah. love the diva. She's yeah. awesome. She's yeah. awesome. So these these challenges going into opportunities, it's actually one of my favorite topics on of life. Um, the second one I think is very interesting is cultivate self-awareness and self-compassion. Oh. And I think this is very important for those of us who are extremely motivated and driven, that ambitious, and forget to be care like care about ourselves. And so you can get upset if you're not making a deadline, or you could get angry and you know this isn't working. That you know. So let's talk about that part of it, and then uh, Shelly, with you on the personal, and then go to you, Susan, on the professional side of be nice to yourself at work. You know? Yeah. So we all get stressed out. There are moments that something's going to happen. Those challenges that present themselves for us um, can, uh, we can get stressed out over them. Uh, they can touch in our insecurities. So maybe we do have some self-doubt. Um, what I find in being human is that it's really important to allow for that allow to feel overwhelmed, allow to feel unworthy, allow all of these emotions to be okay mm. because they're part of us being human. We cannot not have them. And for us to have them and then to judge them on top of having them, you're adding different layers of issues. And then mm. the issue itself is never the issue. It's how you handle the issue. That's the issue. Mm. So what's important is to be able to be self-aware and um, nurturing that compassion, that inner dialogue that we have, that's so important for us to be able to, to talk nice to ourselves, to be kind to ourselves. I mean, mm. sometimes we talk to ourselves in the worst way. And I think what happens in that is there's a level of shame. Shame is an energy killer. Shame is a debilitator. Shame just kind of permeates every part yeah. of our being. And I know when I feel shame, if I hurt somebody's feelings, if I've, if I've said something to Susan or if I've interrupted her in front of something, I, I feel badly about that. I don't like it. It makes me feel awful. And I feel shame. The one good thing about that in being self-aware and cultivating that and self-compassion is that we don't stay there very long. Yeah. And yeah. That's the key. Minding the gap in, in England, you know, they have the tube, the underground, you know, subway and they call it the tube and there's signs everywhere. Mind the gap, mind the gap. It's the gap between the train track and the train. And that's what we need to do in our own mind. Mind the gap, find out how we can take that time that we use. I used to spend years, are you kidding? Years in, in a, in a feeling that made me feel bad. And now so that sucks. I know. No, I know. And it's, and you have to get past it and you can learn, right? Yeah. So that could be okay. another one of those opportunities. Like if you have done something wrong, you know, we've all done something wrong. God, because I thought I was perfect when I was born, but apparently um, mm -hmm. you know, Nancy lets me know that's not so true, but you know, and, and I'm a perfectionist. I'm, I'm really annoying to myself. I'm a very, I am annoying. Um, <laughs> I just am to myself because it's like, go, 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 go. And, um, but you will get mad at yourself. You're allowed to learn from it and say, okay, well, don't do that again. Maybe make, you need to apologize to someone. Maybe you need to just go, okay, I'm going to fix this next time or whatever. And again, that's growth and learning, right? And absolutely, because you, you can't wallow in it. Because if you wallow it, that little thing becomes a big thing, doesn't it? And then that could actually, that ruins your uh, confidence. Totally. Yeah. No, we don't want that. No. Because I want to be perfect and confident. There you go. <laughs> With wine. So exactly. Susan, 
this this can happen in the professional zone, right? If you you get mad at yourself, maybe you didn't get a promotion and you get mad at yourself. Oh, Ooh. you know what? We in the professional zone, you got to talk about burnout because um, I'll tell you, I'm like you, you know, perfectionist and a hard driver, and I burned out several times mm. because we forget about ourselves. We're making those deadlines. We're overperforming to get the recognition, maybe a promotion or whatever. Or maybe we're just in big jobs that, mm -hmm. that require a lot of work. And next thing you know, you haven't slept enough, you haven't eaten well, and your health starts to falter. And what I talk to people about is you've got to actually put yourself first. You've got to take care of yourself. And companies are starting to catch on to this. Some of the companies are instituting wellness programs so that the employees mm -hmm. actually do take care of themselves. And um, it helps reduce illness rates and, and keeps mm. people at work. Um, the other thing that's really important is that if you're not taking care of yourself, your relationships are going to suffer because it's going to come out in your frustration or, you know, maybe irritability or shortness um, and maybe even attention span. So um, you've got to really include self-care as part of your practices, even at work, you know, get mm -hmm. up and walk around or go take a walk outside or Go and connect with somebody because mm -hmm. if you don't, you're just kind of suffering in silence and um, waiting for something to go wrong. And yeah, these things, you know, they they there are things that go wrong at work because of people not caring for themselves. I agree, and with people working from home, I think you can fall into this trap where you're up at a wee hour and all of a sudden you you're still sitting in your pajamas. Yeah. 20 later hours later going, okay, well now I'll just eat a frozen pizza. Do I even have to, did, did I microwave it? <laughs> Gross. You know, so <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. you get to this point where now you're starting to have a bad diet. You're starting to get frumpy and you know, that's why dogs are good. Dog walks are good. <laughs> Cause yeah. other, they really are. I'll tell you being a pet sitter across the country, the one thing that saves your butt from just you'll you could get into that trap and I think in COVID people did that and I think it's also dangerous for people with their own business that work from home because yeah. that is that's like a vortex like not a not a, a vortex. happy vortex yeah <clears throat> it's yeah it's very easy to end up working twice as many hours when you work for yourself yeah. because you're always thinking of what's next uh, mm -hmm. But I don't know about you during, during the pandemic, you know, my, my exercise routine completely fell off, fell off the cliff. And since then it's been an effort to sort of get back to that same regularity. Um, mm -hmm. But it's really important to have that outlet for physical, you know, for your mind, for your spirit, for everything, just so that, um, you know, we're, we're taking care of ourselves and moving around and, you know, not sitting at home in front of the computer for hours on end. Mm, I think your body knows when you're taking care of it too. Yeah. Yeah. Like it has that voice that says, thank you for once. You did something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know when I, I mean, I, I, my routine has been pretty consistent with walking in the morning. That's one of mm. my favorite things. I just walk for an hour listen to either meditation or have a walk and talk with either a client or with a friend or whatever. And uh, it, it just helps me to get moving. And now I'm reincorporating. I like the rewords, you know, I'm reincorporating the gym. So I'm doing mm -hmm. that once a week now, and then I'll, I'll do whatever I'll do later on, but at least I'm actually doing, I've been consistent for what, like, going on three weeks now. Hey, you're over that 21 day thing. That's cool. <laughs> well, you know what it is? It, and you do start to feel better. Like I've been walking dogs twice a day and it's been two hours of walking a day suddenly. Yeah, it's great. And, and now I'm like, uh Oh, we've got a cat next. I better uh, walk to the park. I'm going to walk. I'm going to call you Shelly. Okay. Come, <laughs> we'll do a walk and talk. Let's do a walk and talk. Yeah. It'll be funny. I'll take you to see the, the, uh, the Canada geese. I can't say Canadian geese. I got in trouble. Okay. Because, okay. Yeah. It's Canada geese. Oh, Canada. Ge okay. Whatever. So, yeah. so next time, next time you pour a glass of wine, you know, listen to the little voice that says, would you like to have some apple and cheese with that or <laughs> cake, 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 cake and cake. Yep, I like it. 
cake and pizza. Cake. We decided that there's such things as a cake walk. A friend and I were talking about that. And so, there you go. Yeah, eat, every she, hold the leash and eat cake. There you she, go. She was talking about something about somebody was saying, "Oh yeah, everybody loves a good pub crawl, but what about a bakery crawl?" And I'm like, "What about a cake walk? Like there I'm into a cake crawl. I'll do it." Like, right. ooh, okay. Well, this is really good. Yeah. <laughs> We're yeah. all really being healthy. Hey, I think it's compassionate to treat yourself. I, I like that with the wine and the cheese and there the, you, you know, an apple. I think it's good. Yeah. All right. The next point is find meaning and purpose. Ooh, that is hard. Oh, I and I love that we're gonna talk personal and professional with this. So I think you have to start with the personal, wouldn't you say, Shelly? Yeah, yeah, because mm -hmm. You bring yourself everywhere you go. So it doesn't matter if you're at home or with yourself or with your family, with your friends or at work, because you are the common denominator in all of those scenarios. And I mean, maybe sometimes we think of like Gandhi, right? So Gandhi had a bigger purpose to bring peace to India and with nonviolent methodologies, right? That was his way of, you know, or, or Martin Luther King, they had huge meaning and purpose into their lives. It doesn't have to be so magnanimous and so big. Maybe your purpose is just to bring joy. Maybe your purpose is to experience happiness. Maybe your purpose is to experience a sense of well-being and share that with others so mm -hmm. that others can see what it looks like. I mean, I, I know we've talked about growing up and I had a model of, of how not to be. And mm -hmm. so I learned how to be by how not to be. And so sometimes we find our purpose and our meaning. I mean, I know for me, my, my purpose is just to love the love, the best I possibly can and to love others, love myself, but love others and show kindness and be kind and have joy and get through things with as much ease and grace as possible. Mm -hmm. We're all going to go through crap. There's no question about it. Yep. And, and maybe it's not to save the entire, like mother Teresa wanted to, her purpose was to help all the people who didn't, who couldn't help themselves. I mean, there are big purposes and meanings and there are small purposes and meanings, but in the Jewish tradition, we believe that repairing the world, which is called tikkun olam, it starts with one person. Mm -hmm. So if you if you can help heal somebody else, then it's the representation is healing the world. It's the micro to the macro. I love that because I think we bite off too much sometimes. And then that's when our compassion and self-care goes away. There's mm -hmm. people to aspire to and that they gave everything in it. And it did actually, you know, it was hard as, you know, having a spouse, you know, I mean, you know, it's like mother Teresa, well, she was, you know, married to God basically. Right. 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 You know, so that's a little different, but right. She had to talk to him every day, you right. know, <laughs> she, yeah. had, she had a schedule with him. Yeah. You know, but, uh, and Gandhi and his wife, you know, and it did actually put a strain on his marriage. Yeah. You know, they did. Exactly. It wasn't all roses, you no. know, and, um, and she had to go now, do I want to be part of this big, huge thing? You know, you think about I've listened to um, podcasts with Michelle Obama talk about like it being, you know, and, and I'm not going by who's I'm not getting political. It's not about that. <laughs> I'm so scared to talk about anybody anymore. Right, right. <laughs> you know, but, you know, uh, Barack Obama was our president and is and as a wife, she talks about like this is something that affects her. It affects her children and affects their family unit. How are they going to do? And they had to really think it all through to be able to be as effective as they wanted, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. So I think those huge things happen and everyone's huge thing and small things are different and just, yeah, you just, you know, sometimes you just smile at someone. It, you could, it, it you can change someone's purpose. entire day. Totally. And, and that's you huge. A purpose. Mm -hmm. There's meaning. You bring meaning into your life. I think that's what, I mean, we're meaning makers. Human beings are meaning makers. We love to make meaning out of everything. It depends on what meaning we're making, but what's important. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I got you there for a second, a split you're second. Good. You're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. Oh, yeah. But, Susan, on, on, the, on the professional side, tell us a little bit on that part, because I think even companies, like you were saying, are getting better about wellness. I think companies are also looking, 
at, you know, there there's companies that have, you know, a volunteer day and things like that. Yes. So to be honest, the number of companies that are focused on wellness is still a minority. You know, right. there's a long way to go. Um, and the companies that are focused on motivating their employees and tapping into their purpose and their their why, um, they're more the enlightened companies. I think what we're seeing right now is there's a, a big exodus happening. A lot of people are leaving companies and starting their own mm -hmm. uh, at all ages nowadays mm -hmm. because they're feeling like they're, it's not really feeding their passion uh, in, in many cases, not everybody, but um, so purpose is really becoming important at a younger age now. I mean, people used to retire to get to do the things they love. And now they're saying, I don't want to wait till then. Life is happening now. I want to do what I love. So there's a lot of changes. I think that's also part of the movement of people not wanting to go back to the physical office now because they're balancing their other activities, you know, their mm -hmm. other interests. So um, we're going to see more changes happening uh, in the professional realm. And we're also going to see that companies are going to need to start to focus on employees, well-being and happiness more to keep them. Yeah. And that keeps your customers satisfied. Oh, Not absolutely. To, I've got Simon and Garfunkel stuck in my head now with that song, just right. trying to keep the customers satisfied. Well, they always say, if you take care of your employees, your customers are going to be happy because your employees are naturally going to be excited and customer service will be on a high because everybody's on that why, you know, and it's, yes. it's really true when someone is just getting paid, just, you know, answer this call or whatever. And, and there's no real purpose behind what you're doing in a career. And that that's hard. And sometimes your purpose is I need to make money and I need to do it, you know, so you have to still find purpose in that, spot if you're not quite in the career you want yet sometimes you have it's you always talk about stepping stones Shelly one of I love that um so you have to have care about that even if it's not your dream job right you know that right. well what right. it does is it brings an intention into whatever it is you're doing wherever you are it doesn't mm -hmm. matter I mean if we can just if we can see that this is just what it looks like on the way to whatever it is that we want, if somebody's in a job or they want to change or something and they envision themselves in the job or the or the career that they want. Right. And then recognize that just this moment right here, right now is just part of the journey. Mm. It's not the end all of anything. And then you yeah. can feel more relaxed in being present. So why not be joyful now, even though that isn't happening yet in earth time? Exactly. Yeah. No. And back to the back to the workplace, <clears throat> companies are, are realizing there's research out there. I've read a couple of studies that said that it that when you have happy employees, it actually adds to the return on investment because they're generating more sales, they're making customers happier. So actually it, it, it's a benef big benefit for the bottom line for the company. Mm -hmm. And they need to understand what the employee's why is, right? So that is where it, more the HR and even having programs, um, right. you know, maybe even a speaker or some, you know, educational yes. things so that you can start to learn and get to know your employee better, right? Not just get this done by this time. Exactly. You know, my yeah. daughter in her school, she had a, um, and I think that you would agree, Susan, that there are many companies now having professional development days, where they bring in speakers on different mm -hmm. topics to help the employees learn something new about themselves or about their work so that everybody feels a value. I mean, when we did that, and she asked me to participate in her school, which was so, I'm so happy that she did that. Um, not, not your, you know, you're with your mother and she always sees your genius, mm -hmm. but it doesn't always happen that way in a family, right? Your daughter, your mother, whatever. And so um, uh, working with her employees and I taught them energy and I brought the energy stick and it just kind of blew everybody away. But what that did was it actually helped to solidify that each person, no matter what their role was, was an important part of the whole. Mm. So you get meaning from feeling like you're contributing something towards the whole and towards the bigger intention and purpose and meaning. Mm, I like that. So it's community within a, 
a professional area, you know, a, a professional space, because you can't do everything on your own. A project is not your own project. Right. And a yeah, company that, is not like that. That's a big focus in companies right now is connecting people, is to mm -hmm. foster better relationships. I mean, the number one reason why people leave their job is their relationship with their boss. And so mm -hmm. to keep companies, uh, keep the employees they're working on how do we build and strengthen relationships among you know, individuals and teams and then the whole company mm -hmm. at large. Uh, it makes a huge difference. And they're just waking up to that. Ah, that's, I'm glad, I'm glad things are shifting, you know? And I think that, I think maybe COVID gave everybody this breather of, of figuring things out too, mm -hmm. you know? Because sometimes we're just all go, 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 even in the management and leadership that not seeing the full picture of what is truly needed, you know? And then they don't see their part in it. They just think they're just pushing this paper and putting it over in this pile. And it's just- I know a lot of people paper, who do that. Right? Yeah. The paper shufflers. Yeah. Paper that's, shufflers. that's not a job. That's not fun. Yeah. That's, that's- But why? Why are you moving that from over there to over there? What's the deeper meaning? What's the- Because it picture? makes me look like I'm doing something, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> we know those people in offices and that that starts to irk people and that's not a positive thing in a in a company you know to have that so yeah. everybody who's a, a paper shuffler stop it <laughs> 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 all right so well this ties into our fourth point which is foster supportive connection so that really goes with that so you know with with companies susan getting those relationships together like you were talking about does that include, you know, having, you know, maybe they're having a luncheon, a company picnic, those kinds of things. So it's not just all, you know, work oriented. Yeah. Oh, it goes well beyond that. I mean, that's what the minimum that companies used to do. Now they do retreats, you know, they'll take the people away for weekends. Um, they'll, you know, I worked at a company where they took everybody to a big concert uh, we saw Billy Joel and Elton John, and it was no a, way. A big deal, yes, dude. So, so companies are are, are rewarding people. Uh, it used to be they rewarded, you know, the best producers, but now they're rewarding people as a motivation to keep mm. people excited. Um, so, yeah, there's a, there's a lot more um, like social Friday afternoons that are happening. Mm. Um, companies are even getting into rewards, uh, celebration. You know, it used to be like endless work and then no, no focus on celebrating. But now companies are starting to say, you know, we, we hit a big accomplishment. Let's take some time and celebrate. You yeah. Know, appreciate each other and, and what we've done. So well, also in the, as a, prof, uh, a professional person, right? Everybody, I always think you, you know, your resume is for you, no matter who you're working for. If you're working for a company, it's still about you. So whatever relationships you have, whoever you're working with, you may need them, you know, at a different company or something like that, unless you have a non-compete clause. That's a whole other podcast that's happening too. So, <laughs> you know, um, so it's important to foster those relationships just because you never know what's going to happen in life, right? In in your professional world, you right. never know. Absolutely. Well, you never know at all. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the most, I think, the reason why we're all here is to understand how to relate to each other, mm. how to uplift each other instead of tear each other down. I grew up and I know how to tear each other down. I know that really well. It's a mm -hmm. skill that I learned as a child, but I don't want to do that. I want to lift each other up. I mean, Susan and I talk about this all the time and sometimes we reflect back to each other. Oh, I feel like you're this. I feel like you're not seeing me. And you go, oh God, I feel exactly the same way. So we both mirror the exact same thing. And then it gives us an opportunity to go, huh, I don't want to do that. I want to inspire you. I yeah. want things to come out. I want to help you express all that brilliance that you have. Oh, and it's so much you. easier. Oh my gosh, because- the tear down, you oh. know, and then you're, you're already now stuck in that negative right. mental zone. Yeah. It's like people at work. Okay. I'm, I'm shuffling papers. I'm faking fake work. Right. So you're not really happy when you're shuffling papers. That means something is off. You're not happy. You're not really productive. So you're not happy. Maybe you have a bad relationship, so that's not happy. But if you're doing the right thing and you're making those connections um, and you're going to uplift and be positive, 
it's so much easier. It's like, put, you know how to push someone's buttons when you start to know them. I mean, Nancy and I know how to, like, I don't even have to, she's going to start yelling at me just now from the other room. <laughs> we don't even have to be in the same room and we already know someone's going to do something, you know, right. but right. isn't it better when it's supportive? You yeah. know, that is to me, that's crucial in life is to have, you know, you know, you can call, you know, so-and-so and, and get some advice or whatever without being hurt. You know, yeah. if you're going to share yeah. something important. And I think that is the, really important in a professional role because you, you don't want to be used either, even though you're working for someone, right? Or maybe it's your own business. You're still working, right? You don't want to be used. And there's people that are vindictive in a work front, but in the end, everyone loses and people will remember. And even if you go to a different position somewhere else in a different company or start your own, it will come back. I believe in that kind of karmic, you know, it'll bite you in the butt somewhere. If you burn down right. a bridge, you're, you burn down your own bridge. Right. Your reputation does follow you through life and you can't get away from it. But what I'll say is that people um, who work with other people want to feel like they're part of a team, you know, and that team building efforts uh, and energy go a long way. Um, if you feel like you're part of something bigger and you're creating it together, you get the sense of satisfaction that, you know, we're all in this and we're, we're supporting each other. And that um, is really, really fulfilling. And um, companies that do take the time and do all that team building activities and, and efforts um, get people staying longer because, you know, you hear about that in the military, you know, people run into battle because they're defending their compatriots, you know, the, their, mm -hmm. their fellow soldiers, um, they're there for them. So mm -hmm. that's what it's like. You know, sometimes work feels like a battle zone and you won't go into battle, but you've got your, you know, soldiers with you and you're looking out for each other and making it happen together. And it's not like as a heavy load, like if, if you want to dominate a project, you're going to have a load on your shoulders. If mm -hmm. you want to do it as a team together, it's not a huge load. It's a, here, take my pebble, you know, versus here's this rock. I'm going to try and move this rock all by myself so I can say that I did it. That's when I think we have too many eyes. And mm -hmm. I don't think that's compassionate to yourself. You're setting yourself up to be upset. But I think on the personal side, our relationships are very important who we surround ourselves with. Because, you know, there's people in life that I've just had to say, you know, I cannot do this. This is negative. This is you know, maybe it's a selfish person or whatever, if it is not positive, you can walk, a you're allowed <laughs> to walk away, yes. you know? Yes, you are for whatever reasons that you have mm -hmm. and, yeah. and being true to yourself, being true to your heart, coming, <clears throat> excuse me, coming from the heart, I think is important and having that support, that mutual support, because it's enough that you're in the world, you know, I, I won't use the word against, but you're faced with all kinds of obstacles that we talked about at the beginning and challenges that are going to come. And if you create and surround yourself with people who support you, who love you, who are, are encouraging, who, who build you up, we talk about building you up mm -hmm. and it's a lot easier to get through life than, you know, always facing somebody who's at you, da, 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 da. And, and, um, we, I don't believe that we as any individual human being can live without some kind of support. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you want, you want somebody to say, I got you. I got you. You know, you want that. Everybody wants that. Go girl. In a you go girl. Yeah. And a partnership in it, whether it's a romantic partnership, a professional one, a friendship, you know, just even a colleague, it could be even just in a parents group thing, you know, yeah. like, okay, I'll pick up your, your kid tomorrow. You know, exactly. I'll help you. Exactly. You know, yeah. Life is not meant to be a solo sport. You know, we're in no. this together, and we need each other to get through yeah. the, the day. Yeah, yeah, being solo sport is boring. Eventually, you just get tired of yourself, and that's not <laughs> that's not. I mean, you don't want to drink wine by yourself, do you? You know, <laughs> right. pizza is meant to be shared. You know, I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, so putting the personal and professional life together, that's the fifth point, integrating the two. So it used to be, you know, at five o'clock, you stop, you know, that's it, you know, and you're separating your personal and professional life. That used to be a way, but that has never worked. 
from it just doesn't feel right so i think that's when you lose that meaning and it's i don't think employers like it I, it's kind of a weird thing they say don't take your work home with you sometimes you want to now we're working from home a lot of us so who cares you know so shelly uh, any tips on that balance because it's really about living your best life i think yeah yeah no matter where you are so what it is is being in touch with your own true self, being in touch with what you authentically desire and want in your life. And it's different for every single person. Not every person's values are the same as somebody else's values. Mm -hmm. Somebody else's values, love is more important than money. Somebody else's value, money is more important than love. And hey. so it, it depends on, right. It depends on each individual person. So it's important for all of us to be able to find that sense of alignment between ourself and ourself, ourself mm -hmm. and our soul, ourself and our heart and our soul and our mind to be in alignment internally so that mm -hmm. when we go out into the world, we're coming out whole. We're bringing mm -hmm. whole self into whatever we do. And I know um, a friend of mine years ago was staying with me and he was uh, going out to go to work. He was only here for several days and he was going out to go to work. And all of a sudden he put his work mode on. He became different. He became oh. different. He talked to me differently. He was different. <clears throat> and I said, why, why do you have to put on a work mode to make yourself what more powerful, more in charge. I got to talk this way because I got to be a badass and, you know, macho, macho man, macho, macho man. <laughs> and so he, because he's so open and understood what I was saying, he said, wow, I've never really seen that. I segment myself and make my personal self different than my professional self. And so my contention is bring yourself into mm -hmm. your professional self. Of course, you're going to do things that are um, uh, that has protocol and and work etiquette and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. But you can still be respectful to mm -hmm. each other. It doesn't mean that it gives you the right to yell and scream or demean or condescend or you don't know that just because you're at work and then you bring that home with you and then you can treat your the people you say you love. Hello. That way. Right. That's make any sense so it's finding ways to be your true authentic self being in touch with your values you're in touch with your passions and your unique perspective remember we each bring our own unique perspective to the table and that's true and and we can't do do anything else see to the table we bring it to the table that's right it's yummy delicious that's right it's yummy delicious well, you know, touching on that, it's, you know, when we cut things up like that, you know, it's like going on a diet instead of making a lifestyle change and replacing negative habits with positive. So yeah. it, you know, diets are like here, that's it. And, and now you're depriving yourself of things. And now you've become this bossy. No, you can only have one spoon of cream cheese or cottage cheese or whatever the heck it is, right? everybody's cooking with cottage cheese lately. It's, I don't know what's yeah, going on in the world, but it, cottage cheese is everywhere. It's covered, they just... Yeah. I just look at my thighs and I'm like, all right, you know, it's right there, but <laughs> you know, it's like, I, I got it. But <laughs> when you have a diet, it's like this negative, you're cutting this away for that, you know, whereas a lifestyle change is like this embodiment of all of it. Oh, I'm just making a, a different choice. You know, I'm going to have celery with peanut butter instead of, you know, whatever. I don't know. Whatever. Wine? Yeah. No, that's not happening. No, exactly. But you you know what I mean? You yeah. make those, it's it's a, a lifestyle that makes you happy versus a diet that is this, you've got to do this by this time. And if you don't, you know, it's just not fun. You know, I think it brings it back to the intention that we bring. Mm -hmm. if, if we're in, intending to live a life of joy, right? That's what we want to live. Then that's what we get to bring. Mm -hmm. So the intention of bringing that into everything we do, and I think I've shared this with you, I there's, and I, and I almost feel guilty saying it, but not so much. I have never had a job I did not like. Mm 
ever. Mm. That's cool. Because you bring the joy mm -hmm. of learning or the joy of experiencing or the joy of being productive or the joy of doing or the joy of, you know, serving or whatever it is, you can enjoy yourself in whatever you do, including going to work. Yeah. What do you say about that, Susan? Uh, well, I think that if you work for yourself, you know, you, you don't separate the business and personal, you know, you're just being you. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and, and that can also be if you work for smaller companies mm -hmm. where people get involved in the, each other's lives and it can feel like a family environment. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, if you're working for a more, uh, a larger company where you feel more like a cog in the wheel, um, oftentimes people used to have two personas. You had your work persona and home persona, like we talked about. People don't want that anymore. They want to be themselves. And so I what I suggest to people is to be really clear on their boundaries is, you know, you want to have time for yourself. You want to have time for your family or whatever your outside activities and make sure that the organization is in line with that, you know, and it's, and it's acceptable in the culture. And if not, then you got to go somewhere where they want you to be yourself. Mm. Yeah. I worked for a large company uh, years ago and one of my friends and colleagues, his wife went into labor and they told him he couldn't go to the hospital because we were what? in budget meetings and he couldn't go and be there for the birth of his child. It was ridiculous. Um, but there was that was the culture of the company was that you had to sacrifice everything for the company. Oh. That just, um, that doesn't work. You know, so people no. have to be clear on their boundaries and um, and make them known so that, you know, you don't end up putting yourself last and feeling like, mm. you know, you, you just want to get away. Yeah, because otherwise you just feel like you're being used. Going back to that term again, you know, um, because a paycheck, you can still get a paycheck, even if it's good, a really good one, but still feel used if you're just, oh, yeah, just make this person do this, you know, and that doesn't feel like a care. That's not a compassionate, you know, workspace. And that's not fun. I mean, I remember um, my friends going to see the Rolling Stones had a limo, the whole thing. And I think it was like a double booking of the Stones and Pink Floyd or something. It was like this double thing, right? And I had to work. And instead of going, you know, this is the Rolling Stones and Pink Floyd and I don't even have to pay and I'm in a limo. I worked because my name was on the schedule. Do you think I'm still kicking myself about this? Yeah. Hell yes. It was the Rolling Stones and Pink Floyd you know I, I think it was that but yeah I think it was a double booking or it was like right next to each other and, be, and instead of because I didn't feel like I could go and ask right yes yes and, and you know what I was doing I was working in a deli who I come on <laughs> yes Yes, I, I worked in New York City and had theater tickets that I had to give up last minute many times mm -hmm. because the work needs. So yep. that's where, again, people have to decide what their why is, what's important, and make sure that you look out for yourself. I miss Willie Nelson over the same kind of thing, too. Oh, yeah. You know? A good concert. Oh, well. Yeah. So I heard. <laughs> <laughs> And I could see where he was performing too. And I was like, I want to be there, you yeah. know, and I couldn't. And um, yeah, but it happens, you know, and sometimes you really do have to do that in your career, you know, no, whether it's working in a deli or what, it doesn't matter. Definitely. You know, there's also an integrity to the people you work with. You don't want to let people down. Yeah. So that's part of your personal life too, is to not let people down. Yeah. Well, know? there's a give and take. And, you know, we're, of course, we're being paid to deliver. So there is the responsibility of, of, of having your job and also keeping it. Mm. But yeah, again, you know, everything in balance. That's what yeah. we're for here. Exactly. Balance is good. Balance is good. I'll tell that to my thighs. Let's yeah. get balancing. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies, it's been a fun podcast chat with you. I feel very inspired to kick some good. butt, to kick good. some butt with some compassion and to keep there going. You yeah, it feels good. So everyone, again, the articles in the show notes, uh, you can go to ShellyWizen.com and keep up with Shelly and Susan there. And uh, Susan, do you have a website you want to give a shout out to as well? Uh, nope, it's coming. Okay, it's coming. Okay, the they've got lots of things brewing with you two. This yeah, is exciting. We do. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. a lot of work to put new things together, but um, so far so good. You've had that master, you know, mastermind class. You're saying a hundred people already. Like, woo, that's rock on. So more mastermind classes coming with the two of you. Lots more coming. We've got yeah. more. We've got courses and programs and uh, there's going to be quite a few interesting launches in the next couple of months that we'll be excited to share with you. Very cool. Miss Shelley, yeah. you got a good girl. Yummy, delicious life. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Thank ladies. You, Lisa, as always. Thank you. What a pleasure. So much fun. Thank you for listening to Big Blend Radio's Soul Diving Sunday show featuring transformational life coach Shelly Wizen. Follow Shelly at ShellyWizen.com. Follow us at BigBlendRadio.com.